I'm sure you've all heard that silence is golden. But for who? Silence is a powerful tool, but in most situations, it is misused. You see, silence is golden. Cold with distorted reflections, pick out the images you want to see. Convince yourself the rest are hallucinations. Let your words be stolen, frozen in the back of your throat. Bite your tongue, ignore the metallic taste in your mouth. Zip your lips, turn the key and lock it, put it in your pocket. But the pocket has a hole, and the key falls. But you keep walking, because that key was heavy. Heavy with the responsibility to say something, do something, be something more than silent. Midas touch kind of frozen pretty gold statues for someone to hold and forge into the weapon they have chosen. Your silence is stolen. Silence sends a message, whether you want it to or not. When you hold your tongue in the face of injustice, you allow the perpetrator to take your silence as validation, empowering the harm that they are doing. Consider the bystander effect in concept of diffusion of responsibility, psychological theories that explain why people choose to do nothing. A series of studies done by the psychologist John Darley and Bib Latane found that people are far more likely to do nothing when more people are present, meaning that many people choose to say nothing because they feel it is not their responsibility to. Someone else is bound to speak up, or that because of this lack of action, they decide no action is necessary. And we do this because of our ability to adapt. We are quick to conform to constantly changing societal rules and norms. So when society is silent, people follow. Silence encourages silence. Just look at the course of history. Many well-known dictators have gained much of their power due to the silence of the majority. But beyond this, what causes people to stay silent when their combined voices have the power to change the world? Fear. Someone said that silence is the residue of fear. And that fear can be many things. Fear of embarrassment or fear of punishment. But what you do with that fear matters more than the fact that you are afraid. You see, fear is a powerful emotion, one that can prompt change and create heroes, people who chose not to be silent. People like Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., Malala Yousafzai, and so many others. People who feared the consequences of what would happen if others continued to not speak up. But fear is also powerful in the way that it deafens ears and blinds eyes. But you can't just close your eyes so you don't have to watch. Out of sight is out of mind, right? But you still hear them screaming, so you rush to the comfort of deafness, of blindness, of silence. Blindfolds and earplugs are the privilege of the golden. Ignore how words left unspoken fall like hailstones against glass. Takes a few before it cracks, before it starts to leave holes you can't ignore. Then it shatters. Sharp shards leave cuts that bleed, so they're swept into dustbins, forgotten. Your ability to forget is a testament to your privilege, but not one that excuses the use of voices to silence that of others. The use of voices to discredit the experiences of generations. One of the biggest problems of silence is the way that it allows for the dulling of senses, for ignorance, and for the protection of comfort. Society fears having uncomfortable conversations 
because they fear having to acknowledge the responsibility to do something, to admit to the times where they have been part of the problem, not the solution. We live in a time where many words are being said simply for the sake of making noise. And with so many people spewing words, it becomes hard to hear what they are not, hard to hear the voices that need to be heard. We are so deaf to the events that could change our lives, so blind that we can't see the pages being written even after the sun has risen, so content in steel comfort bubbles, satisfied without sunlight, without a single window pane, because we've forgotten how to deal with pain. So we do everything to avoid it. This is the issue that shelters people from the world's problems. This is the issue that makes some high schoolers legitimately question if racism exists today, despite the recent Black Lives Matter movement, a movement that has potentially been the largest in American history. And part of these issues is voices claiming and speaking loudly about problems that aren't theirs. Being called a Karen is not equal to oppression. You are not oppressed because you have to wear a mask in public. This experience is not equal, not comparable to that that the Jewish faced in concentration camps or the discrimination others have faced for centuries. You do not get to take the pain of generations as a tool to further your skewed imaginations. Your temporary inconvenience is not equal to oppression. And by claiming it as such, you discredit the experiences of those who experience actual oppression. And this comes back to fear. The fear of calling people out, of asking them to widen their perspectives. Not everyone has the privilege of staying silent. We don't get to forget the way your self-declared privilege has shaped us for generations. So if you must be silent, then at least turn your head and listen. And I mean actually listen, not just let words pass from one ear to the other. Listen and speak with the intention of making a difference because you care not because it's trendy. Combating injustice cannot matter only when it is for your benefit, for TikTok views or an ego boost. You cannot simply deny and turn a blind eye and let our cries continue to fade into the background noise of your daily lives when they inconvenience you. You cannot hit the proverbial mute button so we fit into your fragile design, the glass palace of lies that you cling to like some sort of lifeline. Our lives are not the dehumified avatars on a Zoom call. The more you try to turn down the volume, the louder we have to shout. Shout until our throats are raw. Shout until our voices are gone. But you're still silent. Silent when we need you to speak, because we're not Simon. And Simon didn't say, speak up. Simon said, stay silent. Simon says, close your eyes, there's nothing to see. Put your hands over your ears, there's nothing to hear. Remember that you're golden. Hear no, see no, speak no evil type of golden. Rewrite your memories with invisible ink, just so you don't have to think, don't have to summon the courage that allows you to speak. But you have the confidence to say, you're a king, you're a queen, you're the ruler of your own dimension. So why do you keep dropping your crown when it comes to confrontation? You've given yourself this power, so use it. Pick up your courage and brandish it like a sword. Cut to the chains that hold your tongue so that you may lend a voice that may be heard when that of another went ignored. To speak for those who can't find the words and to make sure your silence acts like a megaphone so that voices once deemed background noise are heard across the globe 
and bounce back as ideas, actions, and change that echo for generations. Because courage inspires courage, and that is far better than being golden.